We're at war. The enemy, distracted drivers. And as motorcyclists, we're the most vulnerable to these careless and thoughtless people. I'm going to show you a weapon to help win that battle, coming up next on Goldwing Docks. Distracted driving is an epidemic. In some places, cell phone use is illegal in the car, and so you don't see it that often, but people are still messing with their radios and not paying attention to the road. In places where there's no ban on cell phone usage in cars, like here in Ohio, it's rare to see people that don't have a cell phone in their hand. And if they're under 25, you can pretty much guarantee they've got a cell phone clamped to their head or they're texting away. I've actually kind of turned it into a game. When I'm on the highway, I can actually pick out the cars that have people who are texting away on their phones as they're driving, and I'm almost always right. You can tell because they're just drifting and they're not with the flow of traffic. They're not paying attention. According to the AAA, 94% of all drivers find it unacceptable to text or email while driving. But of those 94% drivers, 36% of those people say they've done it in the last month. 21% of teen drivers in fatal accidents were actually distracted by their cell phones at the time of the accident. And despite more and more safety equipment in cars, motor fatalities are increasing. One out of five people killed by distracted drivers were not even in cars. They are just helpless victims hit by careless people on their cell phones. And those aren't even true numbers because distracted driving is heinously underreported. It's estimated that cell phone usage is directly responsible for one out of every four crashes. In the US alone, that means cell phone usage is responsible for 1.6 million crashes a year with 390,000 injuries. If you're, if you're texting on your cell phone, you're actually impaired. The same level of impairment that you would get from having a blood alcohol level of 0.08%, which is legally impaired. If you're driving your car using your cell phone, you are 5.36 times more likely to have an accident than somebody that's not using their cell phone. So there are some safety features in cars that kind of help with this, and one of the best ones is automatic emergency braking. Automatic emergency braking uses a microwave transmitter. You can see mounted right here in the front of the car. It's, they call it microwave, but it's actually radar, that's what it is. So a radar transmitter in the front of the car so if you have a car that has one of these AEB microwave transmitters, it sends out a signal that reflects off the car in front of you. It receives that signal back and it can tell how far away that car is and the speed differential between you and that car. It leads to things like adaptive cruise control. Here you can see I'm driving and I have my cruise control set for 40 miles per hour. But if you notice, we're only driving 25 miles per hour. And why is that? because the car in front of me is only driving 25 miles per hour. It will follow that car. Here you can see as the car in front of me slows down for the intersection ahead, my car detects that and slows itself down and will actually stop itself. That's a fantastic feature. It not only does that, if you're driving long and you're not paying attention and someone stops suddenly in front of you or maybe there's suddenly a car that is parked on the side of the road that you didn't detect, your AEB will detect that, see that there's a car coming up, see that there's an imminent crash about to occur, and here's what happens. So you get a warning saying, hey, you're about to crash, dummy, and then if you don't do anything, it jams the brakes on. You think this is a luxury feature, but actually automatic emergency braking is in 82% of all new cars sold today, and it's mandated that it will be in all cars by 2022. So if you don't already have a car with that, it's coming. Now I think about that when I'm on my motorcycle and I come up to a stoplight, I stop, I give myself an out between two cars, so I point my motorcycle in that direction, I leave it in gear, I've got the clutch in, and I sit and I watch my mirrors because I have seen so many rear end accidents at intersections where people just slam in because they're on their phone. So I am watching because I really don't want to be hit. So many of our Goldwing Docks members have been hit on their motorcycles while sitting at an intersection. And I don't want that to happen to me. You'd think, well, automatic emergency braking, perfect application. Now no motorcycles will hit at stoplights. There is a problem with that, however. The AEB system is designed to see cars. Cars have a huge metal area 
There's, they've got a trunk, they've got bumper. Even if your bumper is plastic, underneath that, it's got a great big flat piece of metal. And there's all kinds of metal for those microwaves to reflect back. And so it determines whether what you're looking at is a car or maybe a signpost. If it's a car, you're, it's gonna see a lot of signal coming back and it's, it's gonna say, okay, that's a car, I need to slow down. If it only sees a little bit of signal coming back, it says, oh, that's a signpost or it's some spurious reflection off something else, a bridge abutment or something of that sort. So it has to make a, de a, a decision based on the amount of signal coming back. For cars, it's great, it's tuned to work for cars. For motorcycles, not so great. There's not a lot of metal on the back of a motorcycle and they're very narrow. Everything is front to back, not wide like a car. So there's very little reflection coming back to the AEB system. Most AEB systems do not detect motorcycles. They see nothing until it's far too late. When they get up too close, all of a sudden it gets enough signal back that it sees something and it's coming up on it fast, but it doesn't have enough time to brake now and you're gonna get hit from that car right into the back of your motorcycle. So how do we fix that? How, do we, how can we fix that problem? The answer is, a trihedral corner reflector. What is that? Well, let's have a look at how radar works. If we wanna see how to make something appear on radar, well, let's have a look at how we make something not appear on radar. Have a look at this stealth fighter. Notice something that's missing? You see a lot of angles. And what those angles are for is to take radar signal and reflect the radar signal off in another direction, any direction other than back at the source, because that signal actually has to get back to the source in order for them to detect it as a radar signal. So if the radar signal hits the airplane and then a, an angle reflects it off at, a, at some other direction, the airplane doesn't appear on radar. What you need is something that's gonna reflect it back. So you could have just a great big sheet, piece of sheet metal on the back of your motorcycle. That would reflect radar, but what if the person coming up on the motorcycle is at an angle. That signal is gonna hit that sheet metal and then bounce off at a different angle and it's never gonna get detected. The answer is right angles. Notice if we look back at our stealth fighter, there's not a single right angle anywhere on this airplane for good reason, because right angles reflect something directly back at the direction it came. Have a look at the reflectors on your motorcycle. You know the ones that light up when you hit them with a, with a headlight? Do you notice what's in there? A whole bunch of right angles. So light comes in, hits one angle, which reflects it to the second angle, which reflects it directly back in the direction that it came from. So if a car is driving up on you and the headlights are hitting your reflector, the reflector reflects that light directly back at the driver. So the reflector lights up. You may notice if you shine a flashlight in the dark at, the re at a reflector, it lights up really, really bright. But if you move off to one side so that you're not in line with a flashlight, all of a sudden it's not so bright because the light is being reflected back to where the flashlight is. So that's our trick, right angles. How do we put right angles to reflect radar on a motorcycle? The answer to that is a trihedral corner reflector. These have been used on small boats for years, typically because boats are made of fiberglass, which doesn't reflect radar. And so if there's another boat out there that's looking for boats in the fog, it's not gonna show up. So they put one of these trihedral corner reflectors that reflects the radar right back at the direction it was coming from and it, the boat shows up. Here's what I built. I took some, a cardboard box that I had sitting around and I cut the corner out of it. So now we, you can see we have a whole bunch of right angles. Now I took some aluminum tape from the hardware store. I put a link to this down in the description below and I taped it over the back of the box. Now I could have put it in the front of the box, but it doesn't really matter because the, the radar will go through the box anyway. And putting it on the back allows me to put it on nice and smooth, which is important. You could technically use just aluminum foil for this, but it's a lot harder to get aluminum foil really smooth. And this tape, the more smooth it is, the better signal return you're gonna get. So now I've got my trihedral corner reflector. And why does this work? So the microwave transmitter sends out a signal that spreads over distance. A little bit of that signal is gonna hit the car in front and it gets reflected back. And that also spreads. So by the time the reflected signal gets back to the radar transceiver, only a tiny fraction of that signal is actually received. But it amplifies that and then uses that signal level to determine how big the object is that it sees and decide whether that's a car or not. When we're using one of these, 
it's not sending that weak signal and spreading it back. It's taking all the signal collected in this area and sending it directly right back, aimed right at that microwave transceiver. So that transceiver is receiving a much larger signal than it normally would from a car. So even though it's just a tiny little reflector like this, the microwave transceiver sees a huge signal and it says, whoa, there's something big up there. It's a truck, it's a car, I need to pay attention. So this little piece of cardboard with a little bit of aluminum foil can turn our motorcycle in the eyes of a microwave transceiver from a tiny little thing with almost no radar return to a great big car. So we want the point of this device pointing forwards to the front of the bike and the back of it pointing back towards traffic behind us. Where can we mount it? Fortunately, on our gold wings, we have this nice big saddlebag and there's a space inside where we can use some duct tape and just mount it right up like that. Now, it doesn't have to be vertically up and down. As long as it's pointing generally backwards, it's gonna work perfectly because remember, it sends the radar back in the direction that it came. You could also make it bigger than this, as long as it will fit. And of course, the bigger it is, the more signal you're gonna end up sending back to the other car. Something simple that can help save your life and it costs less than 10 cents to put this together. It's a no brainer. I hope this video is of some use to you and you actually get some valuable information and maybe make one of these to put in your own bike and ride safely. If you have any questions or comments, please add them below. And of course, click like, subscribe, hit that little bell. It really helps us out. And of course, don't forget to check out the Goldwing Docs forum. We've got so many people on there and it's summertime. The forum is hopping. There's all kinds of content, great friendly people, advice. If you've got a problem with your bike, we've got experts to help you. Thanks for watching.